Hi everyone, welcome to the Carry Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and today you're going to be starting looking at the project itself, but on, on the architecture level, the organization of the code and how that's going to look like on a, on a overview perspective. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, hit the bell so you can receive the notifications, and I'll be posting the videos from my be posting the links for my previous video so you can keep it up with the understanding of what we are trying to do and it's very important that you understand the process in a whole so you don't you don't have only one piece and you miss the other parts right? so let's start so as i said we're going to be talking about the project the cucumber project itself but on a more holistic view the structure of the project so first we have our project this is going to be our project we going to have features, multiple features in that project. We're going to have a multiple scenarios in each feature, as we, we talked about in the previous videos. And each scenario is going to have various steps, given when, when and then, and each of those uh, is one step. Given is one step, when is one step, uh, then is another step. So each step of your scenarios, uh, it's located here. This is our business, right? We are trying to map to the business side, right? The specification of the example, how, uh, uh, what the system does, not how the system does. Right? It's the business solution here. Great. Each step is going to be mapped to a step definition in the code. Now we are diving into the implementation. Right at this moment, we are not in the business anymore. We are starting to talk about code. We're going to have a step definition. Each step here is going to be mapped to a method in our code, which is called a step definition file. It's going to be a class step definitions. Right? So a given is going to be mapped to a method uh, a uh, then is going to be mapped to a method and another method and so on and so forth. We're going to have some support code here. Uh, this is going to be any code that we need to do uh, in order to, to do whatever we need to do. Like for instance, we need to connect the database. We need to connect to, uh, we need to do our, let's say, uh, page object, we need also to create our API uh, structure. So those are all my supporting code because I don't want to put everything in my step definition, every implementation on my step definition. I want to do an abstraction. The same thing goes with if I was just writing JUnit. I'm not going to dump all my code in the method of the test itself. I'm going to have support code that's going to be uh, that's going to help me out. It, for instance, my uh, page object, right? So my page object is just a abstraction of how I go, I'm going to communicate with my page. And then I'm going to have my automation library. So let's say my page object is going to use web uh, uh, Selenium. My my API structure is going to use Rest Assured or anything else, right? So these this is the technology right and this and this is the system right now we are talking about the business and now we are talking about the system itself and this is the technology that we are using right so this is my project in in a holistic view right uh but then we, we are going to be going deep dive into uh what we are going to be looking at the code itself but more in a structured way still Right, so talking about Java, we're going to have a resource file, right? And this resource file is going to have the features. And I'm putting on the resources because the Cucumber documentation, this is the default, but you can put the resources, you can put the feature in any place that you like. Uh, and in the feature is going to have the features of any, everything that you have, right? All the functionality. So this is a animal feature where it's going to be dealing with animals this is the order where you're going to be dealing making an order of an animal buying an animal 
and the user who is going to buy that so everything related to the user is going to be here order here and animal is going to be here like searching and, and storing and adding deleting removing and so on so this is this is our feature file this is our business and now we're going to have Java so sorry for it's not on alphabetical order but I, I wanted to have uh, a smaller content in the top so it would be less polluted so we're going to have a steps as I mentioned. So I'm what I'm here doing is I'm mapping to this, right? I'm mapping exact, exactly what it just described. So we're going to have a step where each feature is going to have a equivalent uh, step definition, right? We're going to have an animal step definition. We're going to have an order step definition. We're going to have user step definition, and this. The naming, it's a naming conversion for Java. I think for Ruby it's just steps. You don't have definitions. You have just steps on Pluto. So it'll be animals, steps, order, steps. And config, this also can be any name. Uh, and the config one could be setup, could be config, could be whatever. This is just a way for us to organize the code so I can put my hooks, I can put my before, I can put my after, I can put my setup here. Uh, and this is shared among everybody else. Great. So this is my steps. Now this this is going to be mapped as a regular expression. So each step on my feature is going to be mapped to a method. I mentioned that a when is going to be mapped to a step a method in the step definition. But the way that a line of text when I have the when I do this action, this needs this needs to be mapped to a method, and the way that is mapped to a method is using regular expression. So by using regular expression, we can link the human readable line to a method, and then we're going to have our support package, right? We're going to be putting our support code, and then we're going to have our, our domain. So we are we are we are talking about API. We're talking about services, right? So we're going to be dealing with JSON, sending JSONs, and receiving JSONs. So we need to map those into a class in Java. That's the best way. If you are dealing with Ruby, if you're dealing with Python, it's a little bit less verbose. You don't need necessarily to map to a class. But in Java, it makes it easier if you map to a class. So each of those is going to be mapped to a domain value where this is just a class to map to a JSON file. And I'm going everything here, uh, rest assured, relax. I'm going to be covering deep dive in everything here when you look in the code. I'll, we're also going to have an API package, right? Uh, order API, animal API, and user API. This is similar to what would be a uh, page object approach where I have one class mapping my API. So I don't have to have duplicated code all over. Uh, all, all code related to how to get data from the order API, get data or inserting, a, creating an order, uh, searching an order, deleting an order is going to be here. The same thing for animal, the same thing for user. So this way we don't have we, we can have less duplication as possible here in my step definition. And it's also going to make my scenarios more readable, my step definition, sorry, my code more readable. And we need to be worrying about uh, the readability of the scenarios itself on the business level, but we need to be worrying about also the readability of our code because we're going to need to maintain that code. And finally, we're going to have a Cucumber runner uh, that is a JUnit class that is going to know how to execute those scenarios and some, some options or configurations that we can put there so it knows what needs to run, what kind of report is going to generate and so on and so forth. So we're going to be covering every single piece of this. 
but this is important so we can understand and you can have in our heads and it's the strategy that you're going to be building we're going to be building this piece by piece but at the very end we're going to have this structure the way that i'm seeing and i'm and, and i'm describing here All right so yeah great so thank you for watching this is basically what i wanted to to show you i didn't i don't want this video to be too big so if you haven't if you have liked the video uh, give the thumbs up if you haven't subscribed please do so hit the bell so you can receive the notification and i'm going to see you on next video where we're going to start doing the actual coding and the implementation of the scenarios right thank you